Yo, what the deal? This your man Frank Dutch right here. I'm back at y'all with another video, man. And today we're gonna be talking about the different sample rates and bit depths that they are out there, man. Um, we also will be talking about like which one is the best one to use in this day and time. Before we get into the video, don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Ring that bell so you can stay up on everything that we doing, man. You did it? You do, do it right now. All right, let's get into the video. All right, so what are sample rates and bit depths and all that type of junk? The sample rate defines the number of samples taken per second from a continuous audio signal to make a discrete or digital signal. Now, the bit depth, on the other hand, that's the number of possible amplitude values that we can record for each sample. Now, the most common ones are 16 bit, 24, and 32. The higher sample rate paired with the higher bit depth that's going to pretty much make for a better reproduction of the signal that you record. So it's a bunch of different sample rates to choose from, but we're going to concentrate on the main four that we use today, which is 44.1, 48 kilohertz, 88.2 kilohertz, and 96 kilohertz. Let's talk about the most common one, which is 44.1. Everybody use this one, you know what I'm saying? The Nyquist Shannon Theorem says that the sampling rate must have twice the frequency of the original recording, otherwise the sound isn't faithfully reproduced. Now with that being said, 44.1 is more than double the range of human hearing. So pretty much it'll provide a really good reproduction of the sound. 44.1 is mostly associated with files like MP3s, WAVE, uh, VCDs, all that type of stuff. 48 kilohertz, that's the standard sampling rate used by professional digital video equipment. It can reconstruct frequencies up to 22 kilohertz. And it can also have you thinking you're going crazy if you mess around and open up uh, Pro Tools in 44.1 and then Fruity Loops in 48. You're going to hear some crazy junk going on with your computer and your sound, you know what I'm saying? Use 48 if you plan on uploading your music to video platforms like YouTube and Vimo and stuff like that. I said Vimo. I meant Vizio. Not Vizio either. Man, it's for video. It's for video. <laughs> now, 88.2, that's like now the gold standard for like high resolution recordings. Now, using this sample rate produces less distortion as the analog to digital process happens. You know what I'm saying? And it also gives you more freedom during the mixing and mastering process too, man. And mainly because it's a lot more samples of the signal taken within that second. So more details are captured. And it's also worth noting that recording at this sample rate does require a little bit more hard drive space. All right, now 96, just like 88.2, this sample rate gives you like the freedom <laughs> to do whatever you want in the mixing and mastering process. Getting into these sample rates, these higher sample rates, it can be a little bit frustrating because your computer may not be able to handle it. You know what I'm saying? And also not to mention like the hard drive space that it takes up. You know what I mean? All right, so I know what you're thinking. Which sample rate should I be recording in? Which one is better? And I would go off to say, use whatever one works best for what you're, you're trying to do. I feel like the higher sample rates are better because of what uh, the audio industry has shifted into over the, over the past few years, like with the whole spatial audio and just the high resolution streaming files and stuff like that. Like people, people are really taking music for the experience again. The legendary Bob Katz explains it like this. He explains that when converting from digital to analog for playback, it is very difficult and expensive to produce an undistorted signal with lower sample rates like 44.1 or 48. There are at present no commercially available systems that can reproduce sample rates without distortion. However, once you are at high sample rates, like 88.2 or 96 kilohertz, a good converter can produce a completely undistorted analog signal with E. So the difference people are hearing is not in the high frequency content, but the fact that lower sample rates cause the converters to distort the analog signal. So yeah, don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe, man. Ring that bell so y'all can stay up on everything that we doing, man. We out of here. Peace.